wear a scabbard on your back. Keep it ready at your side. If there is a surprise attack, a quicker draw will help you survive. everyone, Lauren back with you and we have to talk about it. I'm going to rant about it. We're going to talk about back scabbers. We're going to talk about swords on back and why it's a bad idea. Now, I don't actually have a back scabbard because it's not something that I would use and we're going to explore why. Now I'm not saying that in a movie that we can't have a back scabbard. I understand why. We need to see the actor's face and the hero's sword at the same time. So Uhtred of Bevanbur with his fancy amber pommeled sword in uh, the last kingdom i get that it's gonna be on his back so that when you see his face you've got the pommel of the sword right there and you get to know everything about him here's his mystical sword here's his face no it's not a mystical sword but you get the idea the prop makers go through a lot to make the hero versions of the props so in the witcher we're gonna see those swords and i get it but it's not a thing that was done and maybe not just because you can't actually do it now, I have seen YouTube videos where people have drawn swords from the back because they've modified the scabbards or they've done something. But if I go to draw, I don't quite get it. And even if it's loose scabbard, I can't quite, I can't do it. I'm stuck. It doesn't work. So the scabbard has to be loose and so that I have to be able to pull it down but if it's loose, then if you were suddenly caught in unawares, you would be wearing this tight, secured. If you're marching, if you're hiking all day, particularly someone who's adventuring, you're doing a lot of work. You don't want a bunch of loose, slappy things. You want it to be nice, form-fitted, hugging the body. You want everything to be in a good place. So having it loose so you can pull the scabbard down with one hand, but then you've got this floppy scabbard. The other thing I've seen is modified scabbards, where there's a gap or a big chamber, almost like a very wide throat. But we're forgetting what the most important thing is a scabbard is for. Okay? And that... <sighs> is to protect the blade. You have a scabbard to look after the blade. Now, two things that we want. One, we want to protect the steel from the elements. Because it's not going to be modern steel, it's not going to be protected, we're not going to have the modern compounds for using it. In a ancient or medieval or even renaissance context, we're looking at protecting the blade. Whether it's iron or steel, it's going to rust, it's going to tarnish, that's not good for the sword. We want to take good care of it, so a scabbard is very important. Then, on top of that, it makes it easier to carry. So, hands free, I've got a scabbard, and it is at my waist. Look at that. So my sharp lines messer from Men's Connect Emporium. I made the scabbard myself. I made the belt myself. I'm really proud of it. Everything comes together. It's really cool. And it sits nicely on my hip. And it's important because if I just shoved a sharp sword through a belt, one, it's rubbing and cutting the belt. Two, it's going to cut my leg. So I need a scabbard. Okay? So I have to have a scabbard. But modifying the scabbard so that moisture, mud, or anything gets in there to corrode the blade that's not good for your sword and in a medieval context in particular that metal isn't going to withstand a lot of this bad weather so we need a scabbard now it's difficult to draw the sword from your back without those compromises and those compromises eliminate why you would have a scabbard so we really shouldn't do it so it's not that I'm going to say, oh, it can't be done. There are lots of ways to modify things, but to make a proper scabbard that totally covers the blade so that it is protected, you can't, you can't do it. You've got to either have a very loose strap and then you're going to spend all this time drawing the blade, or you've got a scabbard that lets all that dirt and moisture in, which is not good for your blade. So it's really just, forget about, can a thing be done? Why is it done, and why should you do it, or why shouldn't you do it? And in this case, you really shouldn't have a back scabbard. So I get why they use it in movies, but I don't see it in reenacting, and I don't see it in any manuscripts. If you have a medieval manuscript with lots of people with swords on their back and drawing swords in battle from their back, 
from a back scabbard. Great, but I haven't found them yet. I'm still looking. I do search for a medieval sword, uh, illumination, illustration, uh, manual, and I haven't seen it. But there's another reason why you don't want a sword in the back. So, here's my sword. It's on the back. I go to draw it. Even if I can get it out, where is my sword? My sword is behind me. If the sword is behind me and the opponent is in front of me, how does that help? Well, I would rather have the sword in front of me. So if the sword is at my side, at my hip, resting nice and comfortably, gently swaying, it's not in the way, I can move around, I've got this very late 15th, early 16th century kind of look to it. A lot of people carrying their messers. I have a rondel, but it could be a bow and bear as well. I just mocked it up because I thought it would look cool. Oh. I'm out. I'm in position. It's faster. It is much faster to draw the sword if it's at your hip. And look, when I draw, even if I only get it out part way, look, I'm already putting the sword between me and the potential opponent. So I'm already blocking. So if the sword was on my back, it's behind me. That attack is still coming in. I would have to do all that motion to get the sword in the way. But again, if the sword is at my hip, there it is. It's ready. Block, thrust, recover, get ready to fight, whatever needs to be done. So having it at your side is much better. So I get it. Show the actor's face without a helmet. Show the sword on the back. We have to see the hero sword. Nicely done. But really, it should be here. And this is what we see. Now, swords can have a baldric, a crossbody strap. We've seen that. You could wear the sword like this. And it could be at your hip still, or under your arm, really. A lot of Scandinavian so Viking sources, they're wearing the sword under the arm in this crossbody strap. So you think about, you know, the under the shoulder holster for a gun, it's the same thing. They're wearing the sword like that, and they're out. Of course, different kind of sword, but hey. Still, they're doing it like that. So, what happens if you get a really big sword? And I know, the question will be, what if I'm carrying this at my hip and I'm moving it around and it's knocking stuff over, well, you could carry it, a larger sword, in just in your hand, it's in the scabbard, and you could just rest it on your shoulder and walk with it. You have scabbards that you can actually use as a walking stick. If I grab one, I'll show you in a second, as long as that doesn't fall. So if we pick up my, Hanway Sharp here, and I'll bring it close. Do you see the bottom, the shape, the scabbard there? It's got a little round button on the bottom. That's so you can actually use it as a walking stick, but you still have it ready. So you can carry it in your hand like a walking stick, showing everyone your sword, how fancy it is, and that you're allowed to carry one, you know, because this is a long sword, you're looking at knights and nobles and people who are probably allowed to have that at their side in the particular context, well, guess what? You have it there. Or you just be carrying it out of the way. Finally, I go, well, if I have it in a scabbard and I have a strap, what else? Could I have it over my shoulder? Well, you could do something like, ah, it's going to be tricky, but we're going to do it. You could have it just over your shoulder like that. Just carrying it and it's just looped over and you can have it kind of like that it could be sitting up more if we have the strap done the right way and then you can swing it forward to draw the sword and the sword is in front of you so there are other ways of doing this now if we had really big swords you would just carry them on your shoulder it's the same thing with pole arms and of course we always see in the video games Oh, I'm going to switch from my spear to my sword. So the spear magically floats on the character's back. You know, um, Kingdom Come Deliverance as a video game does it right. If you picked up a spear from somewhere, you have to put it on the ground when you draw your switch to your sword or your bow. It goes on the ground. 
you can't just store it on your person. And that's pretty accurate. So this is your sidearm though, remember. It's not that you're going to grab this initially. Oops, gotta fix this strap a bit, there we go. You might be, if you're in a battle, you'll have the pull arm. You'll switch when needed to your sidearm if something happens, but you'll be dropping it anyway. So hopefully this explains why you shouldn't use a back scabbard. Not just, oh, is it possible with a lot of concessions? Sure. Should you make those concessions? No, it's not good for the sword blade. And it's not as fast as being able to draw from the hip and be in a fighting position right away. So here I am, I'm ready to go. If I were drawing that sword from my back and I had to pull the scabbard down and then loosening and jiggling, I'm dead. I'm dead. I want to be dead. In a fight, you want to be alive. You want to be ready. You want to defend yourself. So like we said in the opening poem, quicker draw. That's what we want. So there. That is my quick little video on back scabbards and why you shouldn't use them. And like I said, we have no evidence. We don't I haven't seen any illustrations yet. And we see everybody wearing their swords at their hip or you just carry them. Just carry them in your hands. And we, in our modern day, we want all the hands-free convenience. I get that. We're used to it. But a different time, with different people, and different purposes. And if you're going off to war and you're marching, you want everything nice and secure on your body, everything in its place, and everything quickly accessible in case something happens. Yeah, so that's our little talk about scabbards. Well, thank you very much for watching. As always, do remember to like subscribe and hit the notification bell, comment because some people have asked some questions. Uh, if I can get a gorget or a beverage for the salad, we'll do a video on that. I've been asked about that. Uh, we still have to talk about axes. There it is in the corner there. So there's a lot of other videos that we can do that you, the viewer, talked about. So this is your history resource. So all you have to do is hit subscribe and you have all this information and all you have to do is comment and I'm going to try and do videos for the things that you want to hear about. So thank you very much. I hope you have a great day and remember go from the hip and don't turn your back. <laughs>